Hey guys, it's Crowder Million, and we are back with another multiple type Lumina video analysis. So this time around, we got the first matchup between the two mates. Uh, two of the characters I've been looking at the most, Isui and Kohaku, of course. So we're gonna go back right into it. But this time, I'm not gonna do the usual stuff. You know, you guys are used to watching my 40 plus minute video analysis for my stream. My stream being, of course, twitch.tv slash crowd540. This time, I wanna try something different. I felt it was right to do it this time around since we had a new matchup. We were just still testing stuff here on the channel. So I'm gonna go do more of an, an analyzed breakdown, almost like a curated one, going by different clips that I found interesting from this matchup. And I'll just try to break it down. Uh, so this is gonna be a bit more scripted one. They're totally different from the things I've been doing in the past. I'm testing this new format. Uh, please let me know if you like it. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or anything if you prefer. The, just edit it from, you know, edit the stuff from my Twitch. Uh, please let me know. I know a lot of people like to put that in the background while they're doing other stuff. Some other people might, might like a more focused approach like this. Let's see, let's try to get a balance here. Let's see what works best for y'all. Uh, my goal here, of course, is honestly just to teach. You know, like I wanna, I wanna help people learn the game as much as they can, and we all wanna prepare for Illumina, right? That's the goal here. So, without any more delays, let's get right into the analysis. The first thing I wanna show off here is the clean confirms we get here at the start. You see that raw AI ID into a nice confirm, as you can see it here. You can use the moon skill, yeah, 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 to jump cancel after and stuff. So, seems that her combo possibilities are gonna be very very cool this time around I, I'm huge I'm a huge fan of this uh, so this is 5c you have enough hits done here to do raw IID JBB and then charge like JC into a relaunch here so before in the old games JBB used to be more of a soft knockdown you could actually take out but here's actually guaranteed like it's a guarantee uh, this is ground bound so you can actually pick it up for a combo, which is super cool. Uh, way, you know, it, it definitely changes her old playstyle. Kisui's old playstyle used to be more about the tech punishes with the JBB trying to catch attack or whatnot. This seems to have changed, uh, seems to be more standard. You get your own, you know, no lock down, go into Okizeme, all the basic stuff. But it looks to be very effective as we're going to see later on in this video. So here is the first polemic. You could say the more first controversial interaction in this fight. Isui does charge 5C, Kohaku wakes up Moon Drive, and Isui counterattacks with launch attack, and Koha tries to chase with uh, launch attack, but Isui is able to block in time. But there's a lot going on here. This is an interaction we've seen in the past. As we know in Type Lumina, after getting shielded, it is not over for you. You can actually fight back. Uh, we don't know if you can do stuff like a back like in the classic games But we know for a fact you can actually shield back you can do Launch attack or reaction launch attack actually cause five stages of your moon gauge for those new the moon gauge uh, can store up to 11 levels and Using your launch attack raw costs five of them So that is quite a lot of moon gauge to try to get out of a bad situation for yourself while when you do the launch attack after shielding, it only takes three. So you, you save two moon gauges for that. And that's exactly what Kohaku did. Really hard to see from this footage because they were both in moon drive. And you know, moon drive is a mechanic that goes out over time, right? So a little hard to tell, but if you can see in the footage, I'm gonna slow it down again. I'll focus on this on the Hisui's moon, goes away. And then when you see Kohaku do it, hers didn't, didn't go that far off. Right, so that's just to show the little bit of the cost from non-shielded launch attack versus shielded launch attack. I think that is very important and it's going to play out a lot in situations in the actual game, I feel. I think launch attack, as we're going to keep going, I think it's going to prove to be a very strong tool to get out of pressure, get out of situations you don't want to be in, or chase the opponent. So the next thing I want to showcase here is something I've been talking about recently and it was the fact that we hadn't seen Kohaku combos. I was like, did Kohaku get her jump cancelable stuff? Is she back to her AC self where she just wants to get like a quick knockdown, easy ABC into a plant setup? I didn't know. We didn't see anything on her trailer. Her trailer was one of the most basic ones, I think. And I'm glad to report that we actually have gotten some combos. 
And I want to showcase this one particularly. I want to show it off first of all because it's a clean confirm using some new combo tools that she got. And I want to showcase something special here. So nice overhead. Okay, so we have him there using the Molotov. And I, of course, the, the air throw at the end, as you can still act after the air throw. That is kind of sick, but that is not what I came to talk about. I came to talk about what happens here. Did you guys see that? Look at that. She is bonking Kisui with something we hadn't seen before. So yeah, this is a new normal. This is a new Kohaku normal. It is not her auto combo normal. Very important to note. I will showcase her auto combo normal later in this video, just to differentiate it with this normal. But this is a brand new normal, I call it the Bardock, because it literally like grabs them down to the air, puts them back on the ground. It's literally the Bardock. And it's kind of sick that she has that honestly, because a lot of her juggles are usually kind of tough to combo. I know the Kohaku players are gonna agree with me on this one, sometimes depending on height, you know, your delays need to be like different and whatnot. So this is an amazing quality of life stuff, and as you saw here, their Molotov is fast enough that she can actually use it for combos now. So her confirms are looking kinda cool. So yeah, I wanna showcase that she has a new normal. I don't know if this is her new 6C and her old 6C is gone. But yeah, it is something to take care of that. She is actually Bardock now with a fucking brute. So something that has categorized Kohaku throughout all these years is the fact that her Okiseme is usually super strong and very safe because of the plants. What happens here usually is that you throw a plant and even if you get hit by anything, the plant still goes and still punishes the opponent for trying to get their turn back. So that's very classic Kohaku gameplay and it's something that was building a lot into actress again to be honest with you. Characters like Isui, Kohaku, Nero benefited from this so that you couldn't actually trade it favorably versus Kohaku, Isui or Nero for example after Oki. Uh, also FPCL for example with The Rock. You couldn't really trade with them because they were still hit you with those attacks and have enough time to recover and, pu and punish you for that. But I am not sure if glad, but I, I want to show you guys something interesting that happened here. After this interaction, Kohaku just scored a knockdown, perfect opportunity for plant setup as we're gonna see. And he's showing wakes up heat. Usually in the old games, she would have gotten a hit by the plant. But do you guys see the plant is gone. The plants are gone on a hit. We're gonna see this with Johnny later in the video. So yeah, it seems like the Kohaku plants have received a severe nerf, and I kind of like it. I, I kind of like it. It's definitely different. I, you know, my my inner actress again player is saying, "Wow, that is like rad. Like, why did they do that?" But you know, thinking out loud on the philosophy of this game, I think makes a lot of sense because the defender usually has a lot of opportunities here to fight back and try to get their turn back and it only makes sense that after they actually get right and commit you know commit to an option and get you know get it working in this case wake up hit was the option and it worked successfully it makes sense that they don't get punished for it i think that would be really unfair uh, it's definitely an old game design uh, uh game design trope from anime games so i feel this is a more modern approach um, I, I I like it, I will say. Uh, also, things like Hisui Bento, as we're gonna see later in the video, have also gotten some reworks. We're gonna go into them, of course, in a second. But yeah, I just wanted to point out, Kohaku plants actually go away on hit. So, you can't really play as aggressively as before. She still has to play a little safe before committing to mix-ups, I wanna say. So, that's gonna change... I was gonna change how offense operates for her. So in this clip, we're about to see some of the, the things that I've been not worried about, but kind of intrigued about with the usage of Moon Drive, and we're about to see it. So what happens here is Isui gets knocked down after the Moon Skill battle. Kohaku is about to do 2C, so this is her 2C about to go off, and Isui does wake up Moon Drive. And she instantly clashes with the 2C while I believe it's still going off, right? Well, Let's go back frame by frame and let's go. So, this is activation moments. As you see, it's just coming out, and Isui, the first thing she does after coming out of recovery is do moon, uh, moon skill, yeah, 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 yeah. And instantly clashes with it and benefits from this. I think this is a very, very interesting interaction, and it's one of the ones that uh, people need to look out for early on in the game. I'll say it right now. Moon drive into shield, moon drive into moon skills are looking to be 
The best defensive options are the Moon Drive. Reminder that Moon Drive does have some recovery frames. So mashing, I would say it's ill-advised. I would have said, uh, I would say if you would have mashed there, you would have actually lost versus Kohaku to see. But if you commit to a shield or a clash that gets you know clash frames early on, I think that's your best bet out of these situations. I don't know what you could have done here as Kohaku though. I'm assuming you could have fought back because I've seen clips on our previous videos and if you also want to go to our previous videos, I have long video analysis of most of the old gameplay footage uh, here on my channel of course. So if you are intrigued, interested to see what my thoughts were on those matches, feel free, feel free to do so. But in this case, I'm not sure what Kohaku could have done because she was somewhat low on resources as you see she had no moon drive to spare or she had nothing to fight with moon drive Quire, she only had one bottom meter so in this case it seems that isui's gamble was uh what i say educated was a was an educated play just because kohaku didn't have any counter play with moon drive right but moon gauge my bad there's a lot of moon skill moon gauge moon drive there's a lot of moons here man i don't know how we're gonna do this if we're gonna call it md or mg but, uh, you guys know, you guys know my vibe. You guys get me. That's what matters. Guys, we're about to see the most important thing in this video. Might be the most controversial one. I might get it. Attacked, insult for this, for the claim I'm about to make. But look what happens on round two. Guys, might be here. What is she holding in her hands? What is this? What is that? Dion, you are the savior. You are the chosen one. You are the protagonist. How do you let this happen, dude? There's fate go in my melty blood. Fate go. Fate is in this game and you're not. Bro. Yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, I believe this is a, a quartz from Fate Go. I think it's the premium currency of the game. So Kohaku has turned into gambling, has gotten the power up from the gacha gods to get the extra meter for the next round. That is kind of meta. Now, this of course, because the Lightworks is the publisher of Multiple of Tide Lumina. So I gotta say thank you to everyone who has contributed to Fate Go. I am so sorry for your wallets, for your credit cards, for your house, for your car, for your, you know, for everything. I'm sorry that you have to, you know, spend all your money and all your savings to get all that servants and all that good stuff. But I appreciate it because this is what has funded this game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I gotta thank you guys. Now. Let's go a little bit more into this. The implications of this and something that a lot of people have been saying is that there's a chance that characters from Fate could actually make it into this game. Of course, Saber is the favorite one. And I'll tell you what, I'll say it right now, you might not like it guys. This is a controversial take, but I'm willing to take the flames. I'm willing to take the fire, but I, it must be said. Saber. It's DLC. Why can I say this? Because it makes a lot of sense with the fan base. As you can see, Fate Go, of course, being the gacha game, could consist of you spending all your money and resources in life to succeed. So, it would only make sense to put a Fate character as DLC. You need to pay extra money to get the character you want. It's all meta. It makes so much sense. Maybe I'm just crazy. All jokes aside, now nah, this is a funny reference to Fate Go. If you're a Fate Go, you probably were laughing. Ha ha ha, so funny. Look, look, Quartz, Saber confirmed. But yeah, that's. I just wanted to point this out. Ohaku has turned into gambling and uh, definitely paid premium for the meter when everyone else is getting it for free. So I don't know, man. You do you, Koha. That's a funny voice line, though. So this is a funny clip I wanted to show, uh, another cool route that we saw. First of all, amazing frame by Kohaku here, love to see that face. But he's bunking his two in the face, and look at this confirm. Using the EX Molotovs as combo tools, really cool. And of course, I wanted to showcase here, uh, this is her actual auto combo normal, what you're seeing right here. 
So the normal that we saw before, the Bardock, is actually not her Articomo normal. It's a brand new normal, apparently. These are all yeah, an Articomo normal. She's doing AA, and he is using EX Bato here to get the knockdown. So this is what's happening. She sets a plan here, and then proceeds to go for offense. She mixed. So what we're about to see is something very classic to Melty Blood, something that we actually hadn't seen until now. So if you're new to Melty, the way uh, Ground Normal works is kind of interesting. They're actually air unblockable. So you can block Ground Normals in the air. Of course, there are a couple exceptions. There are some launchers that are actually not air unblockable, and it would make sense because they have like long vertical reach, and it would be kind of unfair. But here we're about to see Ohaku is staircasing Isui down, and then she opens her up while she's still holding block, mind you. This was still this was still block stun. As you can see, she was still in block stun here, and then she got guard broken. So yes, guard breaks are still a thing in this game. Thank god. I had never, you know, I hadn't seen this before in Illumina. Glad it's still in. It's a core mechanic of the game. So yeah, I'm happy to see it. That means a lot of things, that means the sweep and tiers are still a thing, which are really popular in multi-blood, if you don't know, sweeps are amazing anti-airs. Ohaku 5A is still a threat for anti-airs, definitely not as cheap as actors again, just for the size of the screen and whatnot, new proportions, HD baby. But yeah, uh, you see guard breaks are still a thing, they still got combos from this. Bonk. So first of all, what the hell is going on here with Kohaku? Well, she's about to summon Johnny from Guilty here. He is back. Get on to rock! Get up to burn! Stand me the fight ever for your desire! But, yeah, so she's about to put the plant. And I just want to showcase again the thing with Kohaku plants Oki. As you're about to see, they go out on hit. If she gets hit, the plants are gone. So Johnny is out in play. He gets hit, and Johnny is gone. Johnny is back in Guilty Gear XR. So, you know, you got you gotta play that game to play him again. You know how it is? So, yeah, you see here gets combo, but just want to showcase again how the game has changed its offense in the case of the maze, characters with summons or characters that put things on the screen. It seems to be that, yeah, you can really play that aggressive lane play and still get rewarded even if the trade is supposed to go against you or, you know, if they match correctly, if they try to get to the situation correctly. Yeah, it, seems, it seems that that has been reworked. Um, still, again, I don't know how I really feel about it. I definitely need to play this game uh, to really understand it. But it kind of, again, it kind of makes sense with the philosophy, with the with the ideas that they have for this game in terms of defense. Yeah, we need to see it. We need to see it in play for sure. So here we're about to see a very nice sequence from Kisui that I think kind of settles it that I'm gonna main this character in release. Uh, so just a funny side story, guys. I've come on record to say that if Sion weren't in Melty Blood, I would be a Hisui main. And if you guys have seen me play Hisui competitively a couple times, uh, definitely I uh, love the character. I uh, really like how she plays. And one thing that I found really interesting from this clip is that, as you're gonna see, Kohaku is holding back in these frames. Okay? So you saw her getting opened up. She is walking backwards. And she gets opened up by 2A. For those who don't know, 2A used to be a myth in Actress again, but she is walking backwards and gets opened up by this. Am I saying that 2A is a low? That's what I'm implying. Yes, what about it? But what I'm saying here is that that does not look like a low, but it is a low, bro. If this is a low, that opens up so many cool possibilities for offense, in my opinion. People were saying that Tonus 2A was a low. I still need to see proof of that, but I think that button is pretty strong. It's pretty long, so it would be kind of, kind of powerful if it were also a low. But that Kohaku does have a long 2A. It's also a low. Maybe they're balancing the playing field by giving everyone a low 2A. We don't know yet, but all I'm saying is this is most likely a low. So Hisui fans rejoice. I think we're gonna have some schmixery coming up. But yeah, just want to showcase this sequence. Are you seeing the 60C series? I guess a quick combo here. Look at that, she makes it to throw. Bento, of course, the good stuff. But yeah, I think uh, her offense is going to be really sick, especially with those 
low to the ground IIDs with JDB into the charge JC or partial charge JC for an overhead option. Or you could also go for the low to A that we just got, you know, just so many possibilities here. I am so excited to lap this character as soon as it drops. Many cool ideas on the board already. So here in the last round we're gonna see one of the usage of launch attack that I've been saying. It's probably gonna be very standard in the actual play, at least early on until actual solutions are found for this. So as you're gonna see, first of all, Isui can cancel her throw items into actual EX, EX moves, which is kinda cheap. So here he here he, she's using the EX Bento, which is really funny, it's really huge. Ohaku using the teleport move and Hisui already predicting this going for a shield. So what she's gonna do here is both are gonna commit to launch attack here. So as we know from before, I've been saying this forever, many times, but I'll say it one more time. You can still take action after getting shielded. So Kohaku here is committing to the launch attack and Hisui also committed to launch attack. So here's the super anime clash, that's why that's happening because they both committed to that. Ohaku, of course, looking to get out of that, that very bad situation for herself. I don't know what Hisui is trying to do here. I think if she would have actually delayed that, she could have actually punished. Although, we've seen footage, even in the same video, where, where Hisui tried to counter Koha, I think, and still had enough time to block. I think I showed it earlier in the video, though so we still don't know if you can actually punish it, or if it was the other person trying to get greedy and they just got smoked. So I kept hearing some people saying, oh Scrod, you're overreacting about you know, drives. We still don't know how this mechanic works. You know, it, it is not a pause button. What are you talking? It has recovery, dude. You're, you're just a hater. You're just a hater. So I want to show you here one of the powerful, again, powerful uses of Moon Drive. In this case, Kohaku is the one benefiting from it. So Sui here scores a knockdown, is gonna go for Bento Oki, the classic stuff here. Wake up Moon Drive, look at the button. The button is literally about to come out and the bento is on top of her. So what would Kohaku do in this situation? Look, the, like, like, the table's already active. This is an actual hitbox, I am pretty sure of that. And she's doing frame one, Moon Drive, Moon Skill. She's out. She flew away, her planet needs her. Her planet needs her, she's out. And as you saw here, I am pretty sure that it clashed with the button and it clashed with the bento. Why can I say so? Because if we go back here to the footage, uh, we're gonna see here in the actual video that it actually hit twice. There were two clashes here. One, two, and then she's out. So I'm pretty sure it clashed with the actual button, which to, to everyone's credit, it wasn't a media attack. But it was. it's still kind of strong that, the, that you can get out of you know, not super meaties or not stuff that's already prepared like that. Maybe there's a way to make it so that she can get out of that. One thing to note though, very important about the clashes in Moon Drive, which is something I still see people having some confusion. Of course, we haven't gotten much information about this mechanic, but very important to note, look at Kohaku's Moon Drive whenever she clashes. Yes, so for whenever she uses a Moon skill, she can only clash if she has enough moon moon drive, moon gauge. Jesus Christ. We're gonna go all the way here with the moons, guys. You guys are gonna correct me in the comments. You guys are gonna do it when I play the game. I was still saying it correctly, because there are so many freaking moons. That's not my problem. But anyway, back to the main point here. Like I'm saying, whenever you clash a moon skill, you need, I believe it's two moon uh, gauge stages. I think it's moon, two moon gauges per clash. So if she actually didn't have uh, the moon uh, the moon gauge to do it, she could have gotten hit. She probably would have gotten hit here. That is very important to notice when we talk about the moon skills. That is very important. Remember that this is a resource that you're spending. And per clash, it actually costs a lot. Very important to keep in mind. So here I want to showcase a really cool sequence I saw from Kohaku that gives us a little bit more about her, what her combo theory is going to look like. So I think we can start putting the pieces together of what we can do with her on week 1, which is pretty exciting actually. So she's using her T36B into A, and she can actually jump cancel that now, which is, wow, that is a change and a half. She can actually JC charge here and get a full confirm after, which is super cool. 
That get that opens up the the door for so many cool routes. And also combining the Molotov for the side swap for corner carry, I think she might have sauce. She definitely has some type of sauce, which is really cool because it's actually different from every other Koha I've seen. You know, like it's different from the React Kohaku, different from the Akadensa Kohaku, different from the Actors Again Kohaku on PS2, and different from the Actors Again current Code Kohaku. I really like how this character continues to reinvent herself, uh, version after, after version. And, you know, I think, again, she's getting some tweaks here and there. She is definitely different, but she is really cool. I'll have to give you that one. The last thing I want to show from this video is the sequence that I find really hilarious for one thing, and we can go over it in a second. No pressure. Kohaku wilds out like a good French Red player will. I am not blocking. So, Hisui. Porter is dead. Moon skill. Ja, 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 ja. I don't care. And you know what's funny? Is that I think she barely had enough moon gauge here to clash one time. So I think if the if the plan would have gone out earlier, sooner, she actually would have gotten smoked. I think that's what would have happened. But, you know, Hisui here wilds out. Again, French Red players not blocking. Blocking impossible challenge, of course, as you can see. So, wow. <laughs> Just wanted to point out again that this was kind of, you know, it was kind of wild, but she actually had enough moon, moon gauge to actually clash one time. So, if she wanted to wild out, this was her opportunity. Uh, which actually opens up some interesting doors for Hisui, which is a character that actually didn't have a meter reversal. She does not have a, a meter, actual meter reversal, like an invincible DP of sorts. But she can use her moon gauge, kind of like a reversal of sorts. It does kind of cost a lot of resources, but it's really cool to see some of these characters that may not have wake, you know, they have invincible DPs, being able to fight in situations like this. I think that that adds up so much more depth to the game and a lot of you know defensive mechanics, which has been a topic of some controversy in the FGC lately. Well, if you want defensive mechanics, look up Melty Blood. We have a couple by the looks of it. Yeah, so overall thoughts, uh, I want to see the second gameplay video. I'll be honest to you guys, I want to see a lot more Hisui. Again, this is a character that I'm most interested from. It's a character I will main on day one. I'm mostly interested on her, Koma, and Noel. Those will be the three characters I'm going to try. And we'll decide which one we're going to go to early on in you know, the life cycle of the game. But Hisui is looking, it's looking pretty nice. As of Kohaku, want to see more of her routing. Definitely, I think she has uh, some potential, but I will say the changes to the plants does affect how she used to play. Doesn't mean she has to be bad, I'm just gonna say the way she's gonna handle offense is gonna be a little bit different from the four guys. So if you're a Kohaku player, you may want to start looking at maybe some more safer ways to find your offense because actually getting mashed, actually getting heated on, actually getting DP'd on or something like that will actually have more consequences than before. That's all I wanted to point out for this regarding Kohaku. Again, a character I want to see more of the combos, more of what she can do with her plants. Because I think what we saw with her plants are being really basic mix-ups. Uh, I don't think we're going to see anything super layered, you know, like a 5-layer OS burrito stuff. We're not going to see none of that stuff here in our gameplay trailer. But of course, I want to see what people in the lab pull up in the first couple weeks. So look out for Kohaku. I think she definitely has potential. She's always had potential. She's Kohaku, of course character that has gone a lot through a lot of stages a lot of stages going from what i'm going to say like hard work in mid tier to a problem character to even more of a problem character he's all over the place you can be anything so that's gonna be it for this video guys again if you like this new format of video analysis please let me know please leave a comment on what you thought of this video analysis what you thought of this match itself what you thought of the characters so yeah we're gonna keep going the way that you guys want if you guys want just want to see my edit streams then i will do so i'm more than happy to do that if you like guys like more of these a uh, bit more curated more anal in-depth analyzed less of the you know going back and forth through some points please of course let me know i will do what you guys prefer so i'm still a million so again like subscribe and see you guys next time